Hello again, I'm Matthew from TheWetPen.com, and as I was browsing around on Etsy last week, I ran across a new brand of ink from Mexico that I had never heard of before. It's called Monarca, after the monarch butterflies that migrate to Mexico for the winter. I bought one called Manglar, which is the Spanish for mangrove, and it arrived very quickly, in just a couple of days. As far as I can tell, this ink is only available in the USA through Etsy, so I'll post a link below. Monarca has two series of inks, each with four inks, one inspired by the Mexican desert regions, and one inspired by the Mexican Caribbean. This one, as you can see from the box, is in the Caribbean series. The inks are sold in 30 milliliter bottles, and each comes with a wooden bottle stand and pen holder, which is actually very practical for these taller bottles like this. Overall, the packaging is beautiful and really well done, with a beautiful box and a nice label. I like the stylized butterfly logo. The bottle is a standard one ounce Boston bottle, like this one, which leads to my only complaint with the packaging one that it shares with the Diamine 30 milliliter bottles, and that is, of course, that the opening of the bottle is too small to accommodate even modest-sized pens like this Twisby Eco. Or even this glass dip pen. Birmingham Pen Company managed to find a similar bottle with a wider mouth, so I hope that Monarca does the same thing in the future. Anyway, the slot for the pen on the wooden rest is wide enough that it works just fine for larger pens, like this Opus 88 Omar, so that's good at least. I'm going to swatch this ink on four different papers here. My color ring, Plain Rhodia, Cosmo Air Light, because I think this color looks nice on warm paper, and on 68 GSM Tomoe River paper. I really like this green. It's nice and dark, but it's not pine green or teal like so many others that I own. It's more olive than that, and it looks like there's going to be some decent shading from the dark areas on these swatches. Here we're looking at the coloring and the rhodia. I don't think that it's very similar to any other greens that I own. It doesn't have the brightness and saturation of the grass greens and emerald greens that I own, like these diamines, and it's nothing like these olive greens from Sailor and Diamine, but it's also not as blue as most of my green in the color range of this dominant industry forest, or this Robert Oster monsoon sky. I'd say that this Noodler's Zhivago is about the closest that I have, though of course, it's quite a bit darker. Well, let's take a look at how this ink writes. Here I'm writing on Cosmo Air Light with a 1.5mm stub nib, and the flow is good. It's not as lubricated as some of my inks, but it's certainly not dry or scratchy. Pretty average, I'd say. When this ink is dry, you can start to get an idea of how it shades. Here's the same nib on some Rhodia paper, and you can still see some shading. Here, I've stepped down to a broad nib that's a little bit wetter, and you can see that the ink looks a bit darker overall, and it might look a little bit cooler in tone. Here is a medium pen BBS nib, which is a little drier, but there's not a whole lot of difference. And finally, here's a pen BBS fine round nib, which is a little wetter than the medium, but for some reason, the ink doesn't look as dark here. 
And just for comparison, I tested the same nibs on Cosmo Air Lite. This ink looks gorgeous on this cream-colored paper, and I love the shading with this stub nib. Now, this ink does not claim to be waterproof, but I thought I'd see how it handles a few drops of water anyway. And as you might have expected, it behaves like most dye-based inks. It lifts pretty completely away from the paper after a few minutes, and it ends up looking like this. In addition to the bottle that I bought, the folks at Monarca were kind enough to send me along these cute little sample bottles of all of their inks. That includes the eight inks that I mentioned previously, plus a special edition ink that isn't in either series. I can't do a full review on all of them, but I'll at least show you the colors. Before I do that though, if you like videos like this about new or unusual inks and pens and papers, take a moment to subscribe to my channel. I only post videos when I think I've run across something that's really worth it, so I won't flood your feed with all sorts of nonsense. Anyway, I'm going to swatch these inks on Rhodia paper since it's a nice clean white. And I'm going to start with Tierra Colorada. This is a nice medium brown, maybe a chestnut. Not quite as red as I was expecting from the name, but certainly a warm brown. Here we have Arena Blanca, which is a really unusual light tan, sort of a beige. I'm not sure what I'd do with it, but it's a really cool and unique color. This one is called Nopal, which is a prickly pear, a type of cactus. And this is another really nice green, but more of a grass green. Here's the Monglar next to it. Next is Mar Caribe. And as you'd probably expect from a Caribbean blue, it's a light, slightly aqua blue. Beautiful color, although again, a little lighter than I normally write with. And here we have Cielo Cruel. And this ink is absolutely gorgeous. I love this color. I wish I had also bought a bottle of this one. And I really wish that my camera had focused on the ink swatch. I don't know why I find this one so enthralling, but there's really something about it, man. Okay, here we have another blue ink. This one is called Cenote. This is a richly saturated deep blue that leans a little bit purple, I think. And actually, this swatch on Tomoe River paper is better this time. Here you can see that the ink gives us a little bit of red sheen, though not too much. And if you look closely, you can see that there's some glitter in there. I didn't realize that this was a shimmering ink, so I didn't shake the little bottle. And the glitter is still all settled down at the bottom. The next two inks are also shimmering inks. This one is called Cardona. This one is a deep pinkish red with some copper colored shimmer. And it looks like there's also some greenish gold sheen. And finally, we have the special edition ink, which is called 
Ray Haguar. And if we look at the bottom of the bottle here, you can see the gold glitter that has settled at the bottom. The base color of this ink is a yellowish tan, and the gold glitter is actually a nice addition to this color. Although, there's not a ton of it, even where the ink is heavy. And that, my friends, is all I have for you today. As I mentioned, this ink is only available on Etsy at the moment, and it costs $20 per bottle, which is not cheap. And the fast FedEx shipping doesn't make it any cheaper. I hope that one of my favorite domestic pen shops starts carrying this brand so that I can avoid those shipping charges in the future. I have uh, about 20 bottles of new ink and a bunch of new papers and pens that I want to show you, so I hope to see you all back here soon for my next video. In the meantime, stay safe out there, everyone. <laughs>